first reading, the, the text is Moses, he, he's teaching the people uh, God's laws, God's statutes, his, his, his decrees. And he's stressing a couple of different things. One is he's stressing um, that, that God's laws, his decrees, um, they, they, they lead to life, that they're ultimately a gift. And it also, also he, he stresses the fact that, um, that they are a privileged people to receive these, and it, but it's not just for them, they're to, it's, it's to be for others to see that the way that they live leads to life, it leads to them, uh, their human flourishing, so they kind of evangelizes um, others. And then, the, and then the last thing we heard here, he, he stresses the importance of the need to pass this on now to the next generation and how specifically they need to be really on guard. They need to be really intentional. He, so, I mean, he says, take care. So everything he just said, said, take care and be earnestly on your guard not to forget this. You know, to not forget that God's ways, his decrees, his statutes are a gift, that, they're, that they lead to life. He says, nor let them slip from your memory as long as you live. And then and he says, then teach, teach them to your children and to your children's children. Be intentional that this gets passed on to the next generation so it's not forgotten, so that the generations that come don't have these as gifts, that they, that they don't have um, God's ways to, that leads to life. So, like, the intellect needs formation. The, the intellect needs formation, like, we, 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 so that we know what is right and what is wrong. And I mentioned, I mentioned, I um, can't remember, what's today's Thursday, so it was either earlier this week or last week, we talked about cognitive dissonance, right, where one's belief or one's behaviors and actions doesn't match their um, what they believe. And so what happens is that dissonance inside of them, they end up changing their beliefs because the interior spot of like, hey, my actions are not matching what I, what I believe. So one changes their beliefs. You have, a, you have a couple generations of that, like on a mass scale. Things don't get passed on from one generation to the next generation. And so that's how it lead. It can lead to a societal, um, we'll say, problem. That's how we get further away from what is right and what is wrong. That's how we get more and more confused. And so I think these words, um, they're just really, really important for us to to listen to today. You know, I, I shared at one point at a daily mass before Bishop Conlon talking to seminarians at one point, you know, and, and pointing to numbers and how this is really, we're getting into the first time where the faith is beginning to not get passed on from the next generation to the next generation. It's why, you know, that cognitive dissonance piece is why I hear more and more things like, well, I never, I never knew that. Like, I never knew that was a, a sin. I never knew that was a mortal sin. I mean, we could talk about like the one's culpability, right? In order to, for it to be a mortal sin, you, one has to have knowledge that it is. So for that person, it's not a, it, it wouldn't be a mortal sin. But it is still grave matter. And because of that, it does harm to the person. And we're, we're getting more and more, like on a mass scale, of one saying, well, I never knew that. I never heard that. People in their 20s and 30s and 40s saying, Father Mark, I never heard that. Like, I never knew that. And being kind of like surprised with a, maybe a given church teaching or, you know, what have you. So that, it's, it's the importance for us listening to these words and being very intentional for them, for it not to slip from our memory, for us to be on guard. And then if you just trans transition real quick to the gospel, 
it becomes even it becomes even uh, maybe more intense or more at least for me um, heartbreaking because why are why are we now Moses and the laws were prior to Jesus who's Jesus he's the fulfillment of the law he's what the law ultimately points to so now we're we're, we're post resurrection you and I are. We're post the God coming, who's, who's the fulfillment of the law. So he's, 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 he's um, it, it, it's God living in us. It's the spirit being in us. It's having that opportunity to be baptized and having God in us. And the ramifications for that, the implications of that is our identity. Knowing that I'm known, that I'm loved, why are, we, why are we having a huge crisis of identity right now? Obsessed with identity and looking for our identity in other places? Because we're, we're forgetting that Jesus is the fulfillment of the new law. We're forgetting our identity as beloved sons and daughters. And so maybe for us today to take care listen to the like the words of Moses here for us to take care as a society for us to take care as a as a com- church community for us to take care as a family to take care to be earnestly uh, on your guard not to forget nor let them slip from your memory as long as you live but for us to teach our children and our children's children the way to life which is Jesus Christ.